Hi Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, what's been going on in Bundaberg? Well, look, we've had a lovely week. Um, temperatures, oh, you know, 17, 16, 17 of a night and 26, 27 ish through the day. So it's still very nice weather. Um, apparently there's a bit of a cold snap coming through. Uh, down south, New South Wales, Victoria and all that, they're copping it. Um, I'm actually doing the stew early this week. <clears throat> what I mean, um, yeah, I've, I've got time in the shed now. Now I've got my little hoochie, um, little shipping container shop up the top here. Um, it's nice and convenient to come out of an evening and have a bit of a fiddle along. So, um, so yeah, I've been out here most nights this week. I've, I've been really enjoying it. Um, a bit of peace and quiet, and I put the radio on, and I don't film any of that because sometimes I sing, and it's not pretty. But it's good. <laughs> I enjoy myself doing it. Um, so look, that's a. Um, I am enjoying my little shop here. Um, it's not big, but it's cosy, and I've got everything I need. And I've been buying plastic pots and things like that to put stuff in. So um, even though we have a lot of drawers here, um, I have been buying some more. So as in, actually, I can just grab them here. You'd think I'd be a bit more prepared, wouldn't you, really? Bloody rough show you're running here, there. But um, yeah, some of these pots, um, these are just Bunnings pots, seven or eight bucks. Um, they'll probably last all right in this environment. And um, these ones here, um, you have removable pots. They look, they're a pretty good thing. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Seven, nine dollars, something like that. I, I can't remember exactly how much they are, but um, I, I've bought a few of these type of pots. Um, if we look down here, oh one of these drawers I've got, um, about that one. <laughs> I still can't find stuff, but that's alright. Um, I've got carby parts for doing up the Fergie carbies inside, and um, yeah I'm just spending a bit of time sitting out here on me Pat Malone, um, yeah trying to sort stuff out and having a fiddle and oh you know just yeah, what blokes do in the shed. Yeah, you probably do. <laughs> um, but look, a, a few jobs. Um, uh, I actually, um, I think I might have showed you this. Um, Banggood gave me an, um, an ER32 to 5C um, collet adapter to try out. And I said, yeah, because I, <laughs> I was looking for something else. I said, yeah, bugger it, send her up. And um, so I've had a bit of a play with that. Um, this evening I've had a play with that and I've just done a little bit of filming for it. Um, I'm, I'm going to put any Banggood reviews are going to be on separate videos and there's a playlist on my channel that says Banggood reviews and if you think they're just Chinese shit you don't want to look at them, no. But, um, but if you're interested go and have a look. Um, yeah, I, I was actually after a, a 5C um, indexer. But um, they haven't got any in stock, so they said, oh, would you like to try this? So I said, yeah, you're right. Send her over, I'll have a look. And, and I've just done the tests on it. And, and look, the tests, I you can probably do better tests than what I did, but I tested it how I would use it. And, and how I would use it is um, I grabbed this collet block in the four-jaw chuck, put some, I would normally put something in there, and then I'd just dial it in. And that way, once I know it's in, I can actually, um, yeah, just you know, replace things and get them exactly right. You know, you, you know, you've dialed the run out out of your chuck, so um, any run out will either be a collet. And as it turns out, the 12 millimeter collet I tested in here is just junk. Um, yeah, it's, it's got a lot. But look, there's a video coming out with with this in it. Watch it if you like. If you don't, don't. Yeah, no worries. Um, I've still been losing a few pounds. Um, yeah, I lost another. Oh, gee, I can't think. I have to, I've got her on my phone every time. We've got these big scales at work for fat bastards like me. And um, every Tuesday when I go in, because I don't work Mondays, every Tuesday I jump on the scales. And so, so last week I lost. Look, well, just under three, 2.8 by the look of it. And so, it's still going well. Um, yeah, I'm 
I'm going okay. Um, I don't know if you can see. No, no good showing it. But um, back on the 7th of March this year, I weighed 144.2 kilos. And that's a big bloke. Look, <laughs> and my duds were getting tight, my shirt was getting tight and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, I've chucked away grog and sugar and um, a few carbs and all that. Now I'm sitting at 122. So, so look, I've, I've lost about 21 kilos, something like that, I suppose, um, in that time. And I'm not finding it hard to do. Um, it's oh, I'm actually quite enjoying it. <laughs> I've got clothes that I've had up in the cupboard there that I haven't been able to wear for years. And, um, yeah, I can fit into them now. But I've always been a big bloke. And um, at 128 kilos, I sat on 128 kilos for years. And then before that, I sat on about 119, 20 kilos for years. So, and look, this is 20 years. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, back years ago, well, when I was a teenager, I was about 90 kilos. But then um, when I found sex, drugs and rock and roll, um, <laughs> probably more than grog. And um, I found that while I, I went up. And um, I, I was, back when I was mechanic and on the tools, I was 118 for a long time. And um, then later on, over the years, I, I go up to 128. But it was only just recently, I, the last two years or so, that I really started packing it on. And didn't matter what I did, um, except for keeping my mouth shut and stop eating. <laughs> um, look, it would just go on. I'd just have to walk past a bloody candy bar and, you know, your, your pants would be tight. So, look, that's going good. Um, there's quite a bit of interest in that. So, yeah, look, thanks for being interested in it. Um, I was just chugging along doing my own thing and, and um, yeah, I had to buy new pants the other day. Um, the other ones are a bit loose and, and I've gone from the hole, the very second last hole in my belt to, you know, you've got this much holes in your belt. I've actually had to put another one in and this morning I probably could have done with another one because I was hitching my britches up all day. So anyway, um, look, staying on track with that, that's a good thing. And um, next weekend we're going away and I'm best man at a mate's wedding. And so yeah, I've been downtown fitting duds on and yeah, getting all dressed up like the pox doctor's clerk. But <laughs> but that's all right. Um, so next weekend, we're actually leaving Thursday and we're going down to Montville. And we're gonna spend a few days at Montville before the wedding and just have a break with all the, all the hassles going on here with the building and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, we'll, um, um, yeah, I don't know what we'll do for a stew next week, whether I'll, I'll have time or I'll have the presence of mind to show you with my travels on what we're doing, but um, perhaps I will, perhaps I won't. I'll just see, I'll go away with a charged up camera and we'll see what comes of it all. Um, the earthworks outside, the bloke that was doing the earthworks that I was whinging my guts out about, um, I sacked him and he gave me the bill for, didn't knock a cent off it, so, um, we're going to, well, we're not going to be in a hurry to pay it, and um, we're going to negotiate that bill a bit because um, where, where we actually asked the gravel to finish, um, there's another about 14 metres of gravel, I think, and a fair bit wide there that um, we didn't ask for, and so, and it's, oh, yeah, it's so deep, so, yeah, so we, we're going to have a few words about that. Um, sorry, um, scratching my eyeball there. <laughs> Well, not scratching me nuts. But anyway, the, um, the, I, I rang the quarry and um, to get another load of road base, and which I have outside there now. And um, I said, oh yeah, Kurt's been buying this road base off you. I'd like another load up here, please. And I said, I haven't been buying it here. And he reckons he was. And um, anyway, so not to worry. And so look, I had a yarn to them, they gave me a good deal, a little bit cheaper than what Kurt was charging me for it, which that's fine, people people add stuff on, make money, so that's all right. And um, so I've got a, a body and a dog, um, that a, a big tipper with a quad dog on the back, so we've got some 20 mil pad base for, to finish off around the tanks and around the other edge there. So um, one of my customers, Brett um, Moore's Bobcat hire, it is, um, Brett Moore, um, He's, he's been a good customer of ours and the other reason 
I asked him about doing a job earlier, and the only reason I didn't use him was because the shed people said they worked in with this other fellow, and I thought, oh, well, fair enough. But um, they're all apologies now, poor buggers. And um, so I got Brett in the other day, we had to walk around the job, and just, you know, we looked at levels, and, uh, you know, we were showing you last week, the levels were up to shit, so I said, oh, what's this going to take, Brett? And he says, look, he says, if I can't sort all this out, is you buy the gravel, if I can't sort all this out in three hours, I should hand you my bloody keys. He's a no good at it. So I was all right. The pit out the front's about 50 mil too high, so we're going to have to work with that. Um, anyway, all good. Um, positive about the shed now, I've, I've, um, I've had a whinge. Well, I spent a couple of weeks whinging, <laughs> but now I'm um, all over that. You've got to move on. If, if you dwell on, dwell on that shit, well, yeah, you'll, you'll make yourself a misery. Um, going away for the wedding, I've got to have a tidy up, apparently. God, good looking rooster like me and I've got a bloody tidy up. So anyway, tidy up for the photos apparently, so I don't know what you can tidy up, eh? But anyway, that, ha, that's the instructions. Okay, in my little shed here, um, I've had a new vice over on a post over there and it came with these jewels, so um, just one of the little um, projects through the week. I didn't film it, um, I was just bugging around. I did a little bit one hour, a little bit the next, so... I've actually made a set of aluminium jaws, um, soft jaws for it, which is what I like to use. Now, the the vice sits on a, it's got a base and it sits on a 2B1 post, and now I've got it set there. I do need to put a post across to the wall to, to make it a little bit um, more rigid. So it does wobble around a bit, so I have to do that yet. Um, that job went pretty well. Um, I, I made up, I bought some paint stirrers and um, I made up some polishing sticks through the week a la click sprint um, which yeah you just lay it on the ground and you, you wind the paper onto your thing so when you, well this one I was using the other night smoothing off a few edges just trying one out and so when this is finished you just tear that one off and cut it along the edge, yeah tear it along the edge which I've already scored and um, it works well, but Click Spring, um, he he has about making them. That's that's where I've got the idea. I'm not bright enough to think of that. And um, so I made a few of them out here the other night. Um, I actually bought a um, uh, number three Morse taper center with a cobalt tip. It's a dead center um, with the side ground out. And I was watching a YouTube clip and. Um, they were bringing up a narrow tool there and they could get, because there was no bulk there, they could get right up in close. And I've got a few narrower ones, but I thought, oh, look, it was 13 bucks. And I thought, I'll just buy one. Look, it's turned up and it's fine, but look at the finish on there. Looks like old Kelly Dog had a chew on that. She's pretty rough. <laughs> but anyway, that, does, that won't make it work any better or worse. It's just... Um, just I was interested to, <laughs> in that. If if, if I um, if I did a melon job, I wonder can I get the light out of there a bit for you? If I did a melon job like that, I'd have it back in there. I wouldn't be showing any bugger, that's for sure. <laughs> Not to worry. Um, another thing I did is um, I, I was watching um, JB from Oz, and um, he's a he's got a channel over in West Australia. There, him and Bruce and and um, the shed, um, they all muck around together over there and seem like they have a good time. But um, but um, JB or Marcus, um, the other day he showed on his channel he bought an ER40 12 sided collet block. And he got it from MT Tools, and MT helped Emma's spare room machine shop that channel too, I believe. Or there was a, there was a little link there somewhere, they were friends or something or other. Um, um, you'd have to go back through Emma's videos to find out the exact thing, but but look, this is 12 sided, and this is an ER32 where um, um, where Marcus bought an ER40. So the ER32, I, I, I'm following Marcus's lead here. Him and his dad bought a heap of gear, and I thought, shit, that's a good idea. And um, obviously, with a 12 sided one, you can you can go four sided, you can go a hex. Um, you can hang onto it with a three-jaw chuck if you'd like to put it in a three-jaw chuck for some little fine stuff and that. And I, yeah, one of those things, I, as soon as I saw it, I thought, holy shit, look at that, what a great idea. And it's got a ball bearing 
um, the ball bearing nut on it as well. So yeah, so I've been um, that was about eighty bucks, I think, um, from M and M and T, um, and yeah, look, it's, it's a lovely finish, beautiful ground finish. You can actually see the grinding on it, and um, well, but it's very smooth. It is a nice job. So yeah, so that'll go in with the R32 collet stuff. Um, yeah, I, I just thought it was a nice thing, so I bought it. So. I haven't got anything much else to tell you. I'll take you over and just show you the, the soft jaws on the vice. They're a bit fat probably at the moment. Um, I don't know if I'll thin them down or not. No big deal. Um, I haven't finished cleaning the lathe yet, but I've been using the mill all week. And um, to try and keep it clean in here, I've had the Makita 18 volt um, cordless vacuum cleaner cleaning up the swarts as I've been going. Look, that's been working. Um, I don't know if it's a, going to be a permanent thing or not. We'll just we'll just see. But um, the toolboxes are all going well. But oh, I've got a lot of work to sort stuff out. I've been I've got to bring up heli coils and all that sort of stuff up from up the back shortly. And um, just to do the carbies, really the little Fergie carbies. We're having a run on them. And um, these little carby kits for for doing up the Zenith carbies on the T20s and the um, FE35s and the 135s. Um, I've got a few of them ahead of me. Um, they've got a one millimeter slit in them. I do have to make a choke shaft for one. You can't buy choke shafts, but you can buy main throttle shafts. So I have some um, quarter brass coming to make the shafts out of. Um, the cheapest thing in Australia was to buy 3.6 meters of quarter shaft. So 3.6 meters is uh, 12, 15 foot. And um, they'll just dock it into two foot lengths for me to post it. So um, so I'll have the market sewn up with quarter at the moment. So um, so look, that's it for the moment. Um, oh, the tractor. Oh, the, um, the, the minder. The young fella's minder. Um, or the company that sort of looks after him, for want of a better word. Well, last stew. Um, at the end where I was having a whinge about the young fella painting my tractor with his galvanised spray um, I, I sent the link to his minder and I says go up to 22 minutes into this and tell me what you think and that was when I was saying he needs a kick in the ass and they need to pay for it <laughs> you know, pay for helping to fix it and all that so oh look they were, they were upset about it that um, someone would do that and, and I actually texted the young bloke and I said, oh, did you touch me tractor up for me? And he came back and he says, yeah. He says, I thought I'd wash it. Then I noticed a couple of chips and I thought I'd do that. And I said, oh, look, you've just done the wrong thing, hey. Um, but it wasn't malicious in any way. It was just he had a brain fart and did the wrong thing. So anyway, um, they got him in and had a yarn to him about it and sort of explained that, you know, when you put a lot of time into something doing it up, um, you don't want anyone thinking they're doing a good thing just come and spray paint it and rooting it all up on you so um, so anyway they come and saw me and I said oh you know you're going to sack him or you're going to keep him and I said oh no look I was young once and um, even though I'm annoyed about it let's work through it and fix it so um, they said well what do you want and I said well it's going to take us a few days sanding and all that so I said how about um while we're working on it, you pay his wages. So that's what's happening. Um, I've told him I thought it'd take about three days to just to get it to do the sanding and all that sort of thing. And and you got to be fair. So anyway, so um, so they've coughed up with three days' wages for the young bloke to um, sand it all back down and all that sort of thing. So um, I've bought sandpaper, yeah, wet and dry sandpaper here to do the job. This is bloody convenient, isn't it? Um, yeah, a bit of 400 wet and dry in a five metre roll, 100 mil wide from Bunnings. Um, I'm starting to know people in Bunnings. Setting up a shed, shit, it's expensive. <laughs> I live at Bunnings. And um, so we have wet and dry paper and we're going to, um, I don't know if you know, I'm not a space you do, but if I know, most people will know. Um, when you do sand paint off like that, um, the best thing to do is a bit of truck wash or a bit of soapy water. And as you, as you block it down over the sides, the soapy water stops your paper from blocking up. So, so anyway, the young bloke's going to do a bit of sanding, and um, I'll buy the paint and all that sort of stuff and do it. But um, 
Yeah, look, it was annoying. Um, it wasn't done with malicious intent. He, he just thought he was doing a good thing. And so um, we've got instructions now that um, he has to talk to me more. Like, And he, he's a quiet bloke, and I know he probably battles with that, so he has to talk to me more. And um, so look, that's going to sort out. Um, Goldie's going to have a nice new coat of grey paint. We're going to paint everything. All the grey is going to get done again. Um, it's just how I want to do it. I don't want to half do it, you know, do this bit and not do that bit. And um, there may be another couple of jobs coming up on Goldie. The steering box has been leaking for a while, which gives me the shit. So if we're going to pull the bonnet off and we're going to have a fiddle around and spend a bit of time on it, well, we might just give the give the gold tractor a freshen up. You know, I've got a big heap of carby parts out of out of England last week and the gold carby even though it runs okay I'm gonna run through that again and um, take it off and sandblast it and make it look nice like the carbies I'm doing up for other people. I look at my carby and I think, oh there's buddy yeah you didn't have your act together then did you? Ha <laughs> so anyway the goldy the gold tractor's gonna be good again. Um, they're helping out with it. Um, everyone's trying to make things right so that's okay. And um, yeah, this weekend I'm looking forward to doing a bit of fencing and mucking around outside here. So, so anyway, look, that's it. I'll take you for a bit of a walk just up and show you the vice. Um, I haven't got any machining to do yet. We're still still in the organising phase. And the little bit I did have, which, look, the machining I had was just drilling some holes and countersinking them. There was nothing else in it. Um, so look, we'll have to get a few interesting jobs happening soon, eh? Yeah, so there's bugging around in bloody bear shed. Yeah. But anyway, look, that's it for this week. Um, thanks for dropping in. Um, next week, we don't know. We are going away. So, I don't know, might be come on holidays with a bear or something like that. We'll just see. Anyway, we'll catch you later, right? This is just a quick look around on what we've been up to. I bought a bit of stuff up to put into the, into the shed. And Bunnings have got these. Nice and cheap as well. I'll try and keep you in focus. And um, yeah, so that's just going to be for nuts and bolts and just a little knickknacks. And the the black drawers down here will be more for the tooling and all that sort of thing. I've got drawers up there with just um, carbide inserts in them. And I'm slowly starting to get the brass stock in. I've got some aluminium aluminium. This is aluminium. It's different to that aluminium. So. Um, it's coming in. The floor's working okay. It's good. The vice. They're the soft drawers I put in. So they are the, probably a bit fat through here. But look, doesn't matter. But I do need to stabilise the, the post a bit because yeah, I can move that around a little bit. So all we're going to do is Coming down here, we're going to bolt a, um, a bit of steel through here, and then when we go over to the wall here, we're just going to put a foot there with a few bolts in it. So, so that'll all work out well. And yeah, the mill—that's a <laughs> that's a little Makita I've been using, 18 volt Makita I've been using to um, hide the swath, suck it all up, and it works well. That was all that swath there was one load in that little Makita. So yeah, it's a good thing.